this Brooks arm swing study, I tell you, I feel like it's like a terrible interpretation of what it's really saying. I mean, it's trying to say, don't swing your arms because it doesn't matter. But doesn't it still matter? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right. He's saying that the arm swing is not as important as it's made out to be in all of the videos that anybody ever puts out, which is true. There's tons of YouTube videos about arm swing being something you need to train a young athlete or a new athlete to get better at. Which, to be clear, you do. Right. But they're saying it doesn't really make that big of a deal. What's what's their number? They're saying a point. It's yeah. So the study was what every ten yards they measured the diff, the difference in in the speed at which they went through the ten yards. They restricted 10 a runner. Yeah, ten Two, meters. Yeah. So they restricted the arms to mm-hmm. where, imagine you've got a guy he's going to do block starts and he'll put his elbows on a pad. Or mm-hmm. when you're running, they they were in a crossed arm position out front, mm-hmm. and then the other athlete was just running normal. Right. So there. Th- that's our. That's our two. That's our two controls. Right. Uh, we've got our control group, which is standard running. We've got our experimental group. And he's saying that there was a 0.8% difference. 0.08 in the... for the full distance. Right. I don't think it was 0.08. I'm pretty sure it was 0.8 because it's a, it's a one point. No, no, sorry. 1.6% difference. Yep. 1.6% difference. And, and it was 0.08. 08. And so eight hundredths of a second over the course of 30 meters. But when you think about it in like, you know, real sports, 30 meters is run all the time. And a point zero eight second difference is the difference in having two steps on a wide receiver is a, right. uh, is a difference in getting to a baseball or not getting to a baseball. Right. On track alone. Uh, that's the difference between making the podium at all and being the guy with gold. Like it's those small numbers add up to big effects and and so of course if you're trying to be the best athlete you need to trade like the parts that separate you by 0.08 percent right right here's a shot of their block starts here that we've got and then uh, those were the standing starts and they just called it neutral and restricted and, and then they hear is a little bit of a demo of them doing it but you know, when you look, it, it doesn't really seem, if they have the videos completely lined up, it doesn't really seem that extreme. And I can understand mm-hmm. if you're not into like insane athletics, uh, I get where you're not thinking that's a big issue, but you know, we can move on from this point, but those times are, are very big. Well, you think about the Olympics and swimming, you know, athletes in, in that world, if you're getting to the elite level, you're literally talking about hundredths of a second right. difference. I mean, it's the exact same thing here well, in this world. And the weird part is when you think about that difference, you you start beginning to go like, well, of course I'm going to use my arms anyway. Like this is a this doesn't matter. This this study doesn't matter. But there are sports where you're not using your arms. Right. For instance, football. Right. When when someone's breaking through the line and they're, they're protecting the ball, they're going to be doing that without using arm swing. So they're they're generating less speed. But the weird part in those numbers, which yeah, we have right here. The weird part of those numbers is those numbers add up over time. So it's the the first one, it's only what point in our in our team sport uh, section, we've only got like 0.03 uh, seconds difference. Yeah, so there was two groups. One was a track and field group. Mm-hmm. The other was team sports. And then what you're looking at basically is going to be a normal and restricted group in each of the categories. Mm-hmm. And then you're seeing the time differences that accumulate all the way to the top of that 0.08 is what they kind of found to be the average or the, the 1.6% right. difference. So if we're looking just at the team sports side, we see that each one has about a 0.2 or sorry, 0.02 or 0.03 um, increase uh, in time if they are not using their arms. It's got the same. It's kind of funny though, as we keep saying it, it seems like, oh, so you, I'm small. on the same po- page as I keep having to put that zero in there, point zero eight point. You know what I mean? It's kind of funny though. As you... Right. But, but it does make a difference because, for instance, if you're an effective arm swinger, well, let's, let's put a, a face to it. You know, you got Tyree Kill, one of the fastest um, football players to ever live. Sure. And he's trying to burn his coverage. You hear those interviews all the time from the cornerbacks. I mean, as soon as he gets a step on you, it keeps building and building, and they can't catch up. I right. mean, which is exactly what their numbers show. All they you show need is each, a step. All I needed by the end of my run, I needed to make sure I had what like 
three feet of distance. Yeah, so let, let's which is a step. Yeah, let's take Tyreek Hill on, on something down the field, right? So mm-hmm. he's probably got a throw that's between maybe 35, 40 yards, something in that general area would be your burn territory, right? right. That's where so he's made his gap. That's he's, what is. He's going either for. got a step, he's got two, maybe he's got three steps at that point. Okay, balls in the air. Maybe he slows down, or old Pat Mahomes is is right on. You know what I mean? And he catches it, and he all it takes is a, a step. You know, yep. I, I think with you're, you're you looking sports, for an opening, you're not looking right. for you're not looking for a full on burn across an entire different. Because we're taking out things like juking, we're taking out things like route running, we're taking out all kinds of things. We're just looking at the full open speed open. Well, field I think that's burn. a that's why that's a great example is because most of his post routes like that don't require an awful mm-hmm. lot of movement. He's literally just sprinting against another guy and showing you that he's faster. Yes, and and and, that's, and, it. and that's the proof. And and I think, like I said, these numbers what they show is if you don't have effective arm swing and you aren't training arm swing as a as a young athlete trying to get into your sport, and that's not part of your regimen, then you might lose. That to the elite athlete, to the guy because that, that you're going against, right, right. Well, I think one great example, you know, we work with or we, we train an awful lot of youth athletes, trying to help these young kids get better. A great example would be youth sports on outfielders running after a ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if you have much of a back, or many many people can think back, but when you're a really young athlete, anytime the ball's in the air, somehow your arms just go to the ball. And you cruise across the outfield and you're trying to do it, but you lose an awful lot of momentum in your right. arms. Your arm swing is pretty brutal. And most coaches, if they're good, are always telling you run till you get to the spot yeah. and then catch the ball. Run first, catch ball second. That's a prime example of when you need arm swing because mm-hmm. let's be honest, are you going to miss 200 balls a season because you didn't use your arms? No, but you're never going to be an elite one because those six that you could have caught right. by continuing to run faster. Eh, those are no longer well, a thing. And there's a difference, too, when you get to a spot with just, we'll say it's an accumulated half second. Maybe you've gotten to a spot with an accumulated half second. That's enough time to retract that ball, do the, you know, our brain's doing weird trigonometry in its head. Sure. Track that ball, reset where I'm actually going to make my catch, and do it clean versus trying to make that catch on the run. And that's just a very different athletic effort. Right. Right. I uh, I attributed this a little bit to maybe this guy didn't exactly play sports or anything like that. Or I'm kind of curious why the conclusion was that it didn't matter. I mean, those right. numbers, even right. if they are specifically perfect, right? Everything was measured properly. We've got guys that really locked in with this, didn't cheat with the arms, yep. trying to use elbows as momentum. I just don't see how you could call those times not uh, significant a piece uh, and and to be clear they they counted them within their conclusion that it was a significant difference because there was there was a difference but they reported that does that difference really matter as much as what we're putting the emphasis on and i would argue and it sounds like we are uh absolutely yes. uh yes yes it does right. um but you know I, I think too just to help kids out a little bit more in and if dads if you're working with kids Something to always remember with your arm action is you've got to drive it forwards and backwards. I think a lot of times, I know it seems simple, but when you take that fly ball example, a lot of times these kids will work forward. So they start running and they don't really drive anything back. Well, there's an awful lot of that rotational element that your arms really help to balance out your body. And when you get to that ball, your head needs to be not bouncing near as much. Right. So if you're not actually using all these levers to smooth out your body movement in sports, it's a a big advantage to be able to offset that balance right. as you're moving towards the ball. I can remember, you know, that was one of the the big things that I always remember when you played outfield was you had to really learn how to run on your heels as you approach the ball or, you know, cushion in your hips because if your head's still shaking, you can't see the ball. No, yeah. And and I think that's the the weird part about the arm action. The arm action isn't maybe necessarily so much for speed as what they were trying to show. The arm action doesn't necessarily increase speed, which we think it does. It's pretty clear that it does. Right. But it also does the well, alternate it, effect. It actually proved it yeah. does. <laughs> we proved it does. Uh, they proved it did. Yeah, I know. That's uh, what I'm saying. It's kind of funny. But the other thing that it is doing is it's doing the balance effect, which, you know, you watch a cheetah run across the field, uh, you know, run after an antelope or something. He's windmilling that tail around to keep balance while he's doing all of his uh, his his actions. Right. Same thing in baseball when you're running to to chase down this fly ball you want to balance to keep like you said 
my head in line to track the ball through the air. In football, the very first thing, once they break through all their tackles and they're getting to the open field, they switch out to get their arms open. Why? Because it opens up their ability to balance and then make the next juke. It's kind of funny, though, when you think of that. That's like a prime example. If you put an athlete in a situation to use their arms, do you think the interpretation here would be, oh, that's just habit. You don't need those. Lock them to your chest. But right. it, it's kind of silly, though, because it literally proves that you need your arms to run faster. But, but if, yeah. I'm, if I'm the guy who's trying to teach my <laughs> linebacker, hey, lock those arms in. You don't need them for that burst of speed. This does prove that. All you're going to lose is 0.03 seconds on that burst of speed right through the hole. And then after that, open them up. Get your fatigue, get everything else online, and you're in a good place. But I, I, cover it up through the line. Could you imagine, though, running sprints and doing those kinds of things and not swinging your arms? No. I mean, there's nothing about that that would be natural. The, no. the guy on the video has his arms crossed. and he I, literally That's my favorite part of the video. Looks literally awkward as can be. And then you can't do anything. Well, look at the, uh, oh, uh, what's the ostrich run? The that's the funniest best part. part Everybody crack it up. I you mean, think, where did everyone they get in the, the background is just <laughs> cheesing because it looks so ridiculous to watch an ostrich run. Where did they get this shot of like, okay, we've got Frank the ostrich. We're going to line him up here. I know and, he's not wearing a necktie, but yeah. that collar looks like he's running <laughs> – like to a business meeting. They got an ostrich on the way to, to a business meeting and he just really quick did a, did a quick run with this other fella. Do you think though that uh, they got him to start at the same or is he just already burned that bad? You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know. But if you watch it through the full, like the ostrich looks ridiculous trying to run because he doesn't have any arms. <laughs> <laughs> it looks silly. Uh, I get a kick out of that. I don't know, though. I mean, it's not a bad study. It, it seems as though it was uh, well done. It looks mm -hmm. like they thought of most everything. Yep. I think the interpretation of it, though, is a little off, and arms are important. I mean, if you need help with any kind of uh, arm action, I've made a couple videos of mm -hmm. that stuff, so we don't need to get into a tremendous amount of detail here, but use your arms. Good study, good knowledge. I think, I think, it's, I think it's great. Yeah, use your arms. You'll run faster. Ex point zero three seconds per 10 meters to be exact per, per 10 meters. <laughs>